going. Good deal. Yep, I'm All recording. Right. Okay. Um, let's see here. Who should be doing the intro on this? I guess the last thing we recorded was me uh, interviewing Ken. So then I guess intro to you this time. Sure. Sounds good. All right, here we go. Hello, everyone. This is Jared Leopold, and you're listening to another fabulous episode of Will and Jared Make a Game. Uh, We've been doing uh, an amazing job, at least I hope we are for you folks. Uh, We've been doing a lot of interviews lately, and we're going to get back to what we've been working on by way of jams hosted by this guy over here hey i'm will um yeah yeah we had talked um some time ago about running um a second get or gosh second guess i'm switching systems here running a uh, tension (laughs) engine jam uh, so not only uh, do we have Honor Bound going on, but we each did uh, kind of a shorter game for uh, that jam, which, of course, is based on the, the same uh, system, same SRD. So it gave us the excuse to to poke around with some different stuff. So I guess uh, my thought was it, it might be beneficial to hear um, how that went for us, how the jam as a whole went. And um, what kind of interesting other avenues we decided to poke around with for our games in the jam. And I I know that's going to translate back to Honor Bound down the line, but we're going to (laughs) try to not scope creep this episode. We're going to try. We'll see. (laughs) (laughs) We did talk about a very defined parameter for this episode. We're going to talk about the jam that leads into next episode. Now, that being said, before we talk about the things that we created, maybe some of the things that other people created, I wanted to ask Will just a couple of base things, because we are huge fans of Jam. At one point in time, like I thought we should really just name this like cool RPG jams, because we are into them. We like taking a look at them, may not participate in a whole bunch, but the ones that we do participate tend to pay dividends for us. So, Will. As the host of the Wound by Tension game jam on itch.io, uh, could you tell us a little bit, like, how, first of all, you're the impetus to do it, and then, second of all, what are the things that you need to do to be able to start putting something like that together? Yeah. Um, well, the the impetus, I suppose... Uh, on one level, it's just I enjoy jams. They're they're fun. Uh, I like to see what all people put out there. Um, one of the first ones that I got involved in was the uh, annual one page RPG jam, uh, which of course has a pretty low barrier to entry uh, and an extremely high participation rate. So oh, it's, it's it's the biggest one that I've seen so far. Oh yeah, agreed, agreed. Um, I didn't look uh, at the total count of how many games were put in this year but i assume it's got to be 100 plus right um yeah for sure yeah uh and and it's just fascinating to me seeing kind of the the novelty of what people come up with um it's always such a wide range and scale of stuff i mean yeah you you wind up with people putting out super slick layout professional stuff and then you have people and i and i'm not saying this to knock them or anything but then you have people uh just like hacking up a bizarre idea they had like hey i don't know if anybody will play this but uh here's a game version of this dream i had last week like yeah just like so fascinating seeing stuff that like never would have crossed my mind um from last year i think there was one called worms and it was like one sentence long and i thought it was oh, that's pretty oh, wow. funny like oh okay I, I get what you're going on there didn't think anything about it and then i think it was like maybe a month ago i saw other people like had it <laughs> and they're like oh yeah it's, it's worms and i'm like 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, people do take a look at these. It's worth joining these. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think um I, I guess as a uh creator, it's really interesting um and a real highlight hearing people talk about anything that you've made, right? Even negative stuff. If they're talking about it at all, with yeah, considering yeah. the just like deluge, the, the flood of stuff on the internet these days, um, yes. in general, not even just RPGs, yeah. um, seeing anybody talk about it or examine it is fascinating. And so I guess I wound up with kind of two two other layers to that because I was like, Oh, well, I've got the, these games that I really like the system of, okay. What if I make that an SRD, a system resource document so that other people can do whatever. Maybe I can see some cool, weird, crazy ideas. Maybe I can see people talk about that. And then, you know, the next layer after that, you wind up thinking, well, you know, maybe to give people kind of a focal point, maybe I look at, at a jam sure going to be easier to like track down whatever discussion or, or ideas people tinker with if it's kind of got this central event. Um, so I guess there's a little bit of, I don't know, hubris involved. I don't, I don't know that it, I, gosh, yeah, I don't know. Some, something like that. There's definitely some level of, Oh, I want, I want to get my stuff out there uh, that, it would be um, remiss of me to try to ignore that. But also, like, it's it's stuff that I know. So when when I'm participating, say, in the One Page Jam, for instance, just it's the one I've done the most with otherwise, when other people are talking about things and they're bouncing ideas around, like, it's cool, and I can kind of participate in some of that on Discord. Um, but I feel like... I can provide more if it's something that I've worked with more, right? Uh, so how, how much can I really say about lasers and feelings to somebody else versus how much can I say to somebody else about the second guest system, the, the one pitch sure. system I did? Like, I just, I feel like I can be more helpful that way. Yeah, I think... The two years ago, the thing I did for the second guest, I think I also used for the one page jam. Mm -hmm. I think they just ended up being pretty close to each other. And I was like, you know what? This actually works great. And I know last year, for, I didn't do the one page jam this year. It just ended not too long ago. Um, but last year I did, I came up with like mind pops where you're rem knots, REM knots, trying to make sure that you are host person doesn't make the same mistakes you've made in the past. The things that you like, keep you up at night that you have dreams about of horrible things that, or quote unquote horrible things you did when you were a kid, those are called mind pops. And so hmm. like you're this okay. dream thing that are that then put together a dream. So you won't do that again in real life. Right. And it's like all whimsy and all this other stuff. If you get too surreal though, you wake up and then your host ends up making a fool of themselves. But the, that's something that I got to do that I never would have thought of unless doing the one game, one page jam was like, hey, you need to get something done here. And you had a month to do it. And for whatever reason, what's, you know, the the mother of invention, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so and that's where it kind of ends up. So for for you then, that you got the good drive for it. So then when you're putting putting a jam together, because the other reason I'm asking this is that I think maybe a month, maybe about two months from now, I might have to wait till after uh, Christmas, I might be joining someone else to do a pro wrestling jam. Oh, okay. Of some sort, just any system you want. Mm -hmm. um, just I bumped into someone on Blue Sky, uh, some sort of wrestling thing. We talked a little bit and it was like, hey, I'm kind of excited to do something like nothing big and like, yeah, we should just do a game jam. So how do you do this? How do you put this together? Well, I sure wouldn't say I'm uh, I'm an expert on that <laughs> by any means. Um, and, and I will say, I, th I think you have a leg up if you already have kind of an existing 
community of some kind around whatever the theme of the the jam may be, whether that's a system specific uh, jam, say, I don't know, Forged in the Dark or something, yeah. uh, or maybe a more general topic, like it sounds like you're looking at with uh, pro wrestling, because if you've already got a community around that specific thing somewhere, I think that's where you start. Like you advertise the jam, you get people talking about it and whatever. Yeah. Um, on my end, um, we, we've got a game and Omicron server and several people in it. Discussion, I would say kind of comes in fits and starts, right? It's, it's not yeah. a super active community by any means. Um, so if you, go to itch.io, which is where virtually all of these that I'm aware of take place because it has a um, kind of built-in system for that, then uh, you can host it from there. And it's it's a lot like uh, uploading a new project, really. Um, You host a game jam in the menu there. Um, You can browse the existing ones or or host a new jam. It has you fill out a page similar uh, to a game listing your description of what you're doing, that type of thing. I, I've looked at other successful jams, one page, uh, some of Fari's stuff, you know, Firelights and Stoneburner and such and that sort of thing to try to collate some ideas of, okay, here's what all they mention about theirs, um, you know, useful links they provide, say, to the rules document or um, videos explaining things, that type of thing, to really sure. pitch participants and give them a quick and like central resource to get started. Um, I do know there are a variety of weeks that you can, or options, I guess, maybe that you can do with the jams. The only thing I've done, and as far as I can recall, the jams I've participated in, has, has just kind of been the community focal point style and just having a timeline but i know there are others um or other options that can be used uh with voting so you can actually turn it into a contest yeah. and, and have people win uh or where you i think there's other options to do some like revenue sharing or like prize type stuff um i have not done that so i can't necessarily say whether that's a big draw in the rpg community or not as opposed to say the video game community um but but i mean the biggest the biggest one that i've been a part of the one page jam a couple times they do not do that extra stuff it's it's just kind of the community aspect so just getting together and doing something yeah okay so right on like if i pull up the jams join jams submitted jams hosted jams dashboard you just go into jams dashboard and then host uh yeah a new jam yep yeah mm-hmm. there it is so if yeah. i say host a new jam need title source sort description kind of jam this is what he was talking about non-ranked or ranked right start mm-hmm. date end date tell people right here in this content box what to say about it submission details if you have fields um, that you need special things on there, uh, tags to get more people, and then create jam, and that's it. Is that it? Yeah, that's that's really it. Um, so that, that's why I'm saying I think it really pays off. I mean, yes, there's kind of a central list of all the ongoing jams and upcoming ones that you can look at in in itch, and there are people that just like browse and see an interesting name and click on it. But I think it, it's really beneficial if you've got an existing community of some kind um, to draw people's attention to it to start with. It, that's what I've done for sure in the past. And I I wish there was a way to look for physical copy game jams, but, but they don't have that, <laughs> which is a bummer. Yeah. So you kind of have to go through each one to see if it's a physical jam or if it's a video game jam because itch does both things on there um yeah. so we've got kind of an idea of how you put that together um how did the jam go for you then you're the host how did it go and did you make something <laughs> yeah 
Well, I guess I guess there's two pieces to that, right? Uh, as far as how did the jam go for me? There's me as a jam organizer, and yeah. then me as a jam participant. Um, as an organizer, uh, I've I've done a couple others as well. Um, a couple when I was first getting started, there was one of them was like the working through some stuff jam that was just like. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. One of the the theme based ones that was pretty, I don't know, didn't know what I was doing at all. But there's been a couple pretty successful second guest jams. And yep. now uh, this one for the tension engine. And I would say as an organizer, um, I tried to do more this time compared to before. Um tried to i think better organize the jam page tried to take more more tips from other successful jams uh tried to kind of provide more help and guides and extra for folks tried to get them into the discord to discuss stuff uh as compared to the second guest jams which we're kind of fire and and forget. Hey, you know, if you want to make a one page jam and you or a game and you happen to see this in the list on itch, great. Um, but at, but weirdly enough, as far as participation goes, I think the the second guess uh, jams did better at, at least as far as getting actual products or projects out there. Um, some of that probably is hey, that's a one page thing. I mean, you can. Hammer right. that out in, in an afternoon or whatever. Like the second guest system is also a lot lighter. You know, it's very much. Yeah. I mean, the SRD is only a couple of pages, right? Uh, Yeah. One page. One yeah. page. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a much lighter system where you can do a lot of. Well, you can do a lot of things with both systems. But yeah, I think yeah. people have a lot uh, bigger, easier grasp because I think the tension system feels like just a core system for a much bigger game right yeah now that being said i think there's some real opportunities that we're going to talk about i think in a little bit where because of this jam has helped me maybe focus a little bit more on some possible smaller things using what you put together yeah and and i think that's that's good i mean a w- at least one other thing from the organizer perspective, uh, I will say this jam, uh, we only, we ended with, I think, 22 participants, if I remember right, though that number fluctuated up and down. I, I, I'm going to guess maybe as many as 30 had joined it at some point and then left because it kept going yeah. up and down a bit. But we definitely got several more people in the server and at least early in the jam several that seemed to be working on some some really interesting stuff we saw yeah. some kind of pages in kind of layout progress uh, yeah. and that type of thing so i'm i'm hoping those are projects that people will wrap up later and that you know there's there's more examination and dis- discussion of their projects as well so um i guess end product maybe not as good as other jams but there is some some groundwork laid that that I feel yeah. positive about. What Will is referring to, I know there was specifically kind of a dark witch hunter type world was put together, and the art that the person was using was their own that they were working on, and it was very like kind of frantic pencil sort of work that looked really cool. Um, and the other one from a mechanic side of it, I'm really excited, and I hope the person. <laughs> puts it together is that um submarine right? yeah that one works i think uses the mechanics very well like if you don't if you don't change anything in the mechanics you can just do that and i think that's a fantastic realization of this of the mechanics yes i i agree very much looking forward to that okay so now as a creator how did it go for you? As a creator, I think uh, it went went great. Um, I uh, submitted two totally brand new things uh, to the jam, actually. 
Um, there, I submitted a few old things so that they were available for folks like um, Party First and the SRD, so uh, they were kind of easy to find in a central spot. But I also did... Um, uh, what did I wind up calling it? Uh, I forget now what the document calls it. Kind of an addenda to the SRD that provided some extra generic fantasy classes and abilities yep. and, and things just to expand on that and give people some more examples. Um, and then I also did a, a full game. Um, I, I admit, had to rush the ending of it a little bit to get it in before the uh, the jam was over. So uh, it is the, uh, the Infinite uh, Ashcan edition at the moment. So it is a game I would like to go back to and, and polish more. Uh, but I think it's it's very doable as is. Yep. And Perfect Love, you've got some comments on here already. Uh, which I, I you love to see on your stuff that you do. Um, yeah, I've just got your page pulled up on Infinite. And I am very excited. I told you I was waiting to uh, for Payday, which is today for me, um, to pick it up because you fell on a, a niche that was a very special time in my life. Like the, like the Vertigo era right of mm -hmm. like vertigo comics for any comics, listeners yeah. yeah um the oh what's the sandman one uh, the sandman i mean just the sandman right but the specifically um is it keys in the mist uh, oh, seasons, seasons oh season season yes, yes that's season probably the best volume mm -hmm. that, that's like that was around that time of me where i was discovering it the the invisibles i just got introduced mm -hmm. to them about that exact time and i actually still own those in my library right now i like <laughs> i actually just reread uh the invisibles while i was working on the really? internet i mean nice. it, it definitely leans harder in the sandman direction yeah. but i've i've read and reread that enough times over the years that i was like well maybe i should revisit some of the other vertigo stuff of that era that sure Add yeah. similar weird mystic themes, which I think was really, really prevalent. Like when I think of Vertigo, um, I mean, I know that there are things that were more grounded, like yeah. 100 Bullets and Scalped that are very good. But when I think the, the I Vertigo vibe. Too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, but when I think the Vertigo vibe, I'm thinking Sandman, Invisibles, Books of Magic, Fables, oh, like all, all of that. Yeah, yeah, I got most of the run of fables too in the single edition. <laughs> like yeah. so, like you bring this stuff up, and it just like gives me all these uh, wonderful endorphins of times that I remember. And I cannot wait to take a look at it, especially like Invisibles is one of those comics too that I will never talk about the ending or like the second mm. half of that series ever because it's still one of the greatest reveals in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's it's good. Back when uh, Grant Morrison could be. Weird but coherent. <laughs> I feel like a lot of more recent stuff. I think mm, maybe a few too many trips. Um, I think there's some stuff love, missing. I know we're going into deep comic book territory, but I still love Seven Soldiers. And that when mm, you get to mm -hmm. the end, like they just kind of the ending just gets dropped on you and i know there's that's for a reason there's legal stuff happening and all that stuff but all yeah. of a sudden you're like oh here it is here's the ending like oh okay <laughs> still love it still amazing uh and i cannot yeah. wait to get the vibes from from your game yeah so that obviously uh that's that's the goal i would love to for us to get a game together sometime of yeah. it um, awesome yeah let's do uh let's do an actual play yeah 100 okay yeah Perfect. Um, did you do anything different with the mechanics in the game? Just Yeah, you know, um, one thing that I think kind of jumped out at me, um, as, as I've done various games with the second guess system over the last couple of years, each game I've done in it, I've tried to pick out something... Um, and try to really focus or or amp that up uh, in 
each subsequent game. And that has been really enjoyable for me. Um, all the way up to Lord of Terror, of course, assuming that the physical print shows up at my door sometime soon. Uh, I assure everyone it's been ordered. I'm just waiting on it. Um, but awesome. anyway, uh, You're all the way, place, folks. <laughs> yeah, all, all the way up to that, uh, expanding this one page solo game out into, um, you know, a, a multi page kind of multi arc, uh, dungeon delving thing. Anyway, that experience has been so enjoyable. I wanted to do something kind of similar with the tension engine to like pick something and say, okay, well, if we were specifically to like take that and twist it or try to crank that thing up to 11, like what, what could we kind of do? And, um, that led me in honest to goodness. Now I forget. I think it was probably the vertigo inspired theme that came to me first, but I was thinking about that, uh, and all of the kind of interpersonal, um, relationships and how important that is um in say the sandman as you get further and further along with morpheus and all of these various figures from his past keep popping up oh hey i need a favor from you and oh yeah yeah well i i know we used to be lovers um a millennia ago and i kind of ghosted you but like i can really use some help right now kind of <laughs> thing or in in the invisibles without necessarily giving any spoilers um you know people you think you can trust turning out to not be who they thought who you thought they were sometimes not who they thought they were <laughs> yeah uh <laughs> and just like all all that relationship stuff l led me to trying to think how to work with that in um the tension engine like how do relationships and tension play out like it seems like there's some fertile ground there at, at first blush and and that's where it eventually kind of led me to thinking okay well wait a minute if i want to try and make these relationships a central um piece of things how weird or how crazy would it be if we just like jettison skills completely what if all you're rolling for uh are well your your attributes you've still got your inherent attributes and then your relationship with something uh whether that's a, a person or a place you know if you're trying to get someone to do you a solid then the better relationship you've got with them, the more dice you can roll, uh, or, you know, you're trying to, to get someone to aid you, that type of thing. Um, I, I thought it played really well thematically, um, into that. And in something kind of with this more mystical realm, it, it, it didn't seem like a big stretch to have relationships with, um, non-sentient things places or objects or whatever as well um so i i really liked how that came together and then um as well thinking of those relationships led me back to the tension uh table itself and i know you're you're always spitballing ideas in in the chat about oh hey you know it could do it could represent this thing in an interesting way or that thing and um so that that really had me looking at well how how can that tie into relationships could we do something different with the um with tension uh explosions and i know we we talked about that off and on with honor bound um and about maybe trying to abstract it uh back re rather than an immediate thing bad thing yeah. happening or complication happening maybe you're you've got different categories of stuff you're kind of putting off a bad thing in one of these categories and for whatever reason that putting that sort of separation um led me to well what if what if i even like go the other way instead of like abstracting it more what if i make it even more specific and ditch the the random table and just say hey if it explodes like 
one of your relationships is getting borked. Like, yeah, you know, it, it's great that um, you, I don't know, reminded Loki of how deeply the two of you were in love in the 12th century uh, AD or whatever. Uh, and so, yeah, he's going to help you out with this heist. But yeah, also that reminded him uh, how you stabbed him in the back and ran off with... I don't know, you know, whatever treasure hoard he wanted or something. Um, and yeah, your your relationship is about to take a step backward because of that. So that was a very, very wordy way of saying that's that's what I wanted to drill in on <laughs> relationships and try to tie that in to multiple steps uh, of the the engine. Yeah, that was fantastic. No, I, yeah, I really like that. I just having like, yes you roll on the table or it explodes. This is the bad thing that's going to happen. Like, even if you like here, maybe one of three things that are bad are going to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah. I, I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. Uh, so for, yeah. Oh, I was just, I was just going to say, so what did you do uh, with your entry? Sure. Uh, so I put together uh, legends of the cursed writers and I didn't, set out on making a weird west themed thing um all i knew is that I, I wanted to play around with the idea of where the players keep track of the tension points on their own take some of the onus off of the the game master what as they're running it and i was going to have it like well as soon as they get like five tension points something's going to explode and i was like i want it to be a curse of some sort and all this stuff and so just one slight follow-up. You mentioned them tracking it. Tracking it individually, like each player having their own pool, basically, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Exactly right. Uh, that didn't work. It, like, <laughs> I think it could have. I think it could have. But at the same time, um, I fell into, I don't know, not necessarily a trap, per se, but I was like, I got into a little bit more of the ORS type of mode on it, which is absolutely fine. Because the game that turned out, I think, is awesome. It's basically just a very stripped-down tension engine. Um, no, the players don't keep track of their tension, but the tension table is a lot more important. Um, basically, what I did is that if tension explodes in roll a one, your haunt from your past happens, right? So you choose one haunt path, so more or less, like a a tag like a status tag like you uh you abandon someone or someone abandon you or you have a secret or you're being hunted or you're wanted whatever it is right and if you trigger that five times your character is over so i put a finite ending to the story which i haven't done before in a role-playing game as far as an external way to be removed from the game outside of your character dying from not having enough health or not having enough honor right um, and so then I pushed even further. I'm like, well, that's just from something that they did. What if we also put in a folklore tribal curse? So I just went, took a bunch of, um, folklore from around the world, did a ton of research and kind of dropped them into six different categories. Like if you're a leganthrope, you know, you finally, after, if you trigger it five times, Four times in this case, like each time you trigger, you get a new power from that tribe. Like if you're a Lycanthrope, like stronger, faster, you can see better at night or whatever. But if you hit four more of them, you have lost all your humanity and you've become that thing. So there's two tracks on the tension explosion that can remove you from the game, right? And so then it was all about doing the fluff and stripping it down. I don't want to get too whole bunch into the mechanics because this is going to lead into our next episode because some of the things that we uh sorry that i uh put together with it is that the working of the attributes plus the skills like you got rid of the skills completely and i think there's an argument saying that you didn't you just changed the skills from instead of them being like charm or taunt or fighting or whatever your skill is that person yeah, yeah. So I, each, I can right? agree th with that argument. Yeah. Yeah. So so if we look at a chart, right, attributes over here, relationships over here, and then wherever they meet, that's how many dice you're rolling, right? Mm -hmm. 
Yep. And I think that's a fascinating, like no one says they have to be skills, right? I love that because now you're just working on a game where your skill is working with this other people or this person in particular. Fantastic. Uh, so for Cursed, I stripped down the skill list down to just six, only three attributes. And the other thing I really wanted to work on was like a little saving throw type thing, mm -hmm. um, which ended up being great. I've gotten to play test it. Uh, it's out on itch in drive through right now. I yeah, it just went up on drive through right? Like today, I think, or yesterday? Yesterday, yeah. <laughs> well, like it just dropped. Uh, the reason for that is for the jam, um, I ended up at 35 pages, I think. And it is truly near the end, just kind of rushing. Just get something done and get it out there. Right, right. right. Um, the whole of the system was realized right you could run an adventure i guess right i mean you could you could but then as of add on another month and a half two months to it as of yesterday drop out i feel so much better about it it's got a map you've got transportation rules you've got prompts for when you trigger the haunts you have more fleshed out abilities you can get the world is a lot more interesting like you work for the baroness and all that um so this is all because of the jam Mm -hmm. Right, and the process going through it, I liked where I went from. I went from a mechanic reason into I really wanted those backgrounds to be those curses and haunts to be interesting, which then led into the setting. And I just hadn't worked in Weird West, like I like the old yeah. West settings, I just hadn't worked in one yet. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> the, I mean, that type of thing's fascinating. I like, I like Weird West worlds, yeah. Oh, uh, me too. I think it's fantastic between like the in between. Um, like did a Dead bunch Lands? of yeah, Deadlands. Like did a bunch of research and all these different ones. So it's yeah, fantastic and it was a lot of fun. And thank you so much for doing the jam. That honestly, from looking at, at my quote unquote portfolio of games, mm -hmm. like that is that is going to be, I think, a big one for me. I think I'm going to continue awesome. working on it. I've got an adventure that I'm almost done with putting out called The Salvation of Honest Jacob which I'm pretty excited for that one. <laughs> I like I like the name, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. And um, I also, just thinking about putting stuff out there and it kind of being uh, foundational, helpful, whatever, um, and, and that last-minute rush to the end kind of thing makes me think jams, I think, feel like such a good place to practice stuff particularly like layout yes. and that type of thing, which I, I know is something that you were asking about in, in the discord, like while you were working on cursed writers, like, Hey, yep. I'm trying this for the cover and you know, how do I do this thing and, and stuff like that. Um, so I, I would recommend that a lot to listeners like, Hey, here, here's a good excuse to make yourself work on some of those skills. Yeah. And if you ever were like, Oh, well, when you make a game, you just kind of put everything in there. When you're on that last week of the game, you realize very quickly what's important to your game, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that helps you focus on it like, oh, this is what's important. This part's not done. It's just not going to get done. And that's mm -hmm. okay because this is the focus. This is what I want it to be good at. Um, do the other stuff later to flesh out to make it more of a if you even need to. But that is a, an amazing focuser of energy, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> That's what yeah. Jams do. <laughs> Man, it's uh, admittedly a wildly different topic, but I've been dying, or yeah. not totally different, but not a direct connection. But anyway, I've been dying to mention you were you were talking about some of your uh, Cursed Writer's thought process just now, mm -hmm. and I just put my hand in front of the mic, so I probably sounded pretty muffled. Um, but like thinking about stripping things down in, in the system and like, is, is there, you know, something I could do without and that sort of thing. And then you were talking about the haunts and the curses and potentially having your character completely removed uh, from the game. You know, if your curse is like fully activated, just gave me the idea. I know cursed writers currently has um health uh and i think it has a willpower or equivalent as well right no just health 
Yep. Well, it's got they call it grit, so you can get embarrassed to death. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> embarrassed to death. I love it. Uh, but the thought occurs to me: Is there a game, even if it's not necessarily cursed writers, but something in a similar realm where players do maybe have you know curses, haunts, that type of thing? that also completely does away with a health equivalent hmm. and your character, like they're so powerful that the concept of like health does not really apply to them as a vampire or whatever, but the concept of them eventually being completely overtaken by this curse does exist. And that's what eventually eliminates the character. I wonder like, I, I love that so much. Uh, it, one thing that I don't know if this will ever get done, but if anyone wants to take this and run with it, is the if you do a super. I was thinking of a fatalistic superhero game. Mm -hmm. um, that would be perfect for that. Just yeah. get rid of it. Yeah. Oh. Your health, like you have like three levels of health, like incapacitated, wounded, or like shaken or whatever, and then healthy, right? Just do those three. And you can go up and down those, no big deal, whatever. But then it's whatever you're, you've used your powers too many times, eating you from within, or you're an alien from another planet. And it's like, you know, that's just, that's just your time, you know? That yeah. is a fantastic idea. That's a great what thing is, to work with. You got me thinking comics now. What was that series? I think it's a DC series, uh, not a super famous or super ongoing one, but, uh, man about a kind of team of misfit heroes that like they were relatively ordinary people given powers through whatever experiment and it is killing them like they're extremely mm. powerful right now but they've got like a year left to live or whatever oh i wish i could remember the name of that <laughs> mm. please write in if you're listening to this and you know exactly what we're talking about yeah uh, like, you know vikings vikings love oh. to have a good day to die right there you go there you go that's uh, another one you could go with um just yeah like you could totally do it like the uh like critter commandos is coming out pretty soon just do it that kind of style you know you're like you're all part of a team that you're going you're just not going to make it eventually you're part of a undercover group you're gonna be doing this for life or until you die right that mm -hmm. could be a good hook too these are all fascinating ideas i i love it yeah oh new man. jam let's go <laughs> because otherwise i won't do it without the jam that's all i'm saying <laughs> uh i was hoping i could do a quick uh quick search here and see if i could find that um that series but i don't know not not as easy to uh, search for that term or those terms as I might have wanted. Oh, well. You know, you know honestly, since um, your game is, like in the Ashcan version, for the type of characters that you're running, that seems like that'd be a pretty good deal too, right? Yeah, yeah, very possibly. Yeah. The concept of health in kind of a discreet fashion like we're used to in in games like shouldn't really apply to the aspects of the I infinite mean, isn't the game literally called the infinite <laughs> yeah yeah although, although also the concept of health in there i i guess i did abstract a little bit where it's yeah. just resolve it's just your like um well resolve to like carry yeah. on so you know okay. conceivably you could get depressed out of the game so to speak which feels very um sandman, -esque sandman to me. yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh no the ennui is set in oh no yeah yeah exactly <laughs> exactly and were we all angsty in the 90s was that just kind of the deal and i, I was, still yeah. love it. i still love a good angst now and again but Boy, that was, that was the prime time. <laughs> that was the the gist for it, man. You know, just Nirvana on through Y2K, I guess. 
<laughs> All right. Before we get too much further down the road here, um, I, we will talk about how the things that we discovered during the jam are going to relate to Honor Bound in the next episode. Um, because I think we, we both found some very interesting things uh, that we could maybe work on that make this game a little bit better. Now, that being said, I do want to bring up with Will. Um, so the final of Lord of Terror, the physical mm -hmm. comeback, is you're thinking like in a week or two? I am I really mean, you're supposed to have it now, but I yeah. know that they have posted. I get the updates to whether like we're short standing or it's Big Bad Con this week and like things are happening all the time. I get that on their end. But you're thinking like in a week um, or two just to get that. And then what, what's the process after that? It doesn't go yeah. out the door yet. Um, well, so I've, I've got my digital proof. I'm waiting on the physical one, which is supposed to be here at any time. And I mean, the digital looked fine without me requesting any tweaks. So Thanks. I'm hoping the physical is pretty cursory. Like, oh, yeah, looks looks great. But you never know. I, I figured if I didn't split it up and wait on that extra step, then something would sneak in. But uh, assuming 100%. that that arrives any day now, uh, then I approve it and I get the the final batch, which I think should be faster, uh, uh, kind of as I understand it, because I'm doing this from a different printer uh, than um, the print on demand uh, through like drive through. Um, but it, it's another printer I've used before. It's the same printer I used for uh, warmer in the winter, um, that type of thing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, so it, the, there's some delay in getting uh, one off like physical proofs sent. But once that's set and I give them the OK for the full print run, that should be super fast in my prior experience. Um, so I, I would assume I'll have those in hand um you know a couple weeks after i approve the physical proof and then i'm in charge of mailing them at that point admittedly yeah. uh so i've got to drop them in the mail but i've i've already got um you know envelopes and supplies and stuff here ready and waiting on that just a matter of getting them so i can drop them in in the envelopes hey let's do a quick video once that process is laid out Show oh, people what that looks like. Right? Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Because yeah. it, I mean, people want to see it. I want to know. I want to see it because I'll, hopefully I'll be doing something similar pretty soon, you know? Yeah. That'd be yeah. awesome. Okay. Uh, right on, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the jam went well. Thanks so much for running it. I think we got two really neat games. And just want to give a quick shout out. There was a third um application yes yes good call and it is mastica the floor tales from the floor uh yeah. interesting interesting it, stuff here it's it's another horror uh game kind of um i think he said there's uh maybe a creepy pasta it's based on uh i forget now i've not heard um, that phrase in forever that's amazing yeah um do 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 terrifying tale of the floor an apartment building that becomes an inescapable labyrinth of supernatural terrors so uh it's a fun fun concept uh, i think does you know leans into the horror like starting roots of the tension engine and yep. does some fun like layout stuff with like because it's, it's set up like a like a tabloid magazine yeah. uh, and they've got like some fake ads and stuff that are super entertaining I, yeah i wouldn't have posted the, and then I, I started i went down a rabbit hole on the fake ads thing oh like, no i think you shared <laughs> something and then i got into it then i found another one and i just kept going yeah, it's a fascinating uh, concept, and yeah, the layout's really cool, too, so if you want to check that out. Um, but yeah, I'm good for this week. How about you? <laughs> yeah, I I think I'm good. Folks, if you're looking uh, for us online, I think you can find uh, me on pretty much every social network as Gameonomicon, uh, and Jared, where all can they find you, and under which name? Uh 
right now, just go under Jared Leopold, weird spelling, J-E-R-O-D-L-E-U-P-O-L-D. Uh, look, just go there for um, drive through, and it's Proxism by Design on Itch because I made poor choices, um, and now I'm stuck with them, and that's okay. They are, they are memorable choices, Jared. We are defending them. <laughs> I feel my experience levels go up just by admitting that, you know? <laughs> yeah. So uh, thanks, everyone, and uh, keep on jamming if you haven't started one yet. Ooh. Well, I think that was that was good, and I, th I think we did a pretty good job keeping.